Hey, I'm Pat Monahan from the band Train and Patcast. Uh, today, I have some great news. The new version of 50 Ways to Survive is out on uh, iOS and also on your computers for the first time. You can you can get that the whole thing f uh, so you can play it on a big screen and then also on Android. Uh, I'm excited to meet the mermaid. She looks a lot like my wife, so I'm very excited. So besides 50 Ways to Survive... Uh, Let's see what's happening lately. I am in Nashville writing, and I, I've written with some lovely people. There's a band called NRBQ, and I think my favorite guy that I've written with maybe in my life is a guy that's called Al Anderson, so you got to check out that band from a long time ago. He might be one of the best guitar players that's ever been on this planet. Um, that's about it. Everything else is kind of awesome. I need some sleep. And uh, I'm excited to talk about this next podcast, E. Uh, my guest began his musical career at the age of eight uh, when he first picked up an accordion. By 1976, he was in a band. Uh, he had a record deal and uh, was releasing his first record. A few years later, he joined the Babies, which uh, if you don't know the Babies, you got to check them out. Uh, John Waite was the front man on that band, and he's one of my favorite singers of all time. Uh, it was a British rock group featuring John Waite. In 1980, Jonathan Cain, who I'm speaking of right now, who is uh, about to do this podcast with me, uh, he left the babies to then become the keyboard player of Journey. It was Journey, is where, you know, Journey is where he found all of his success, writing and playing on many other biggest hits and uh, bringing to the table the idea and the keyboard riff that uh, became Don't Stop Believing," which if you haven't heard then I don't know where you live because it's got to be the biggest song of all time. Uh, there's a pretty interesting story for that, and uh, you'll hear that when you listen to the, the podcast. Journey started in 1973 in the San Francisco Bay Area. Its uh, biggest successes came during Jonathan's time with them. Uh, and Don't Stop Believing became the top-selling catalog track in iTunes history in 2009. Worldwide sales for Journey are calculated to be about 80 million albums. That's insane. They've had two gold albums, eight multi-platinum, and one of their albums even went diamond. That must have been Escape. That's pretty much unheard of, even you know during the days when people were selling a lot of records. Jonathan has seen Journey through uh, a lot of years, writing, recording, and numerous lineup changes. Uh, he's got stories for days, and he was generous enough to share quite a few of those with us uh, during this interview. We were in Aspen uh, at the Jazz Fest during this interview. Uh, he, he, we met up. Uh, I didn't know he was going to be there, but he was, and he made an hour for us, and man, we cracked a bottle of wine open. Jerry played some guitar, and we really had an amazing time. So uh, thanks to Jonathan Kane. You're going you're gonna to hear a really great interview. So here he is, Jonathan Kane on the PatCast. What do you do when nobody's looking So I Bieber was the there, hotel, you know, Bieber's there, yeah. and it bummed me out, man, because we had 200 people outside the hotel. You couldn't even get we did that in Europe to you. the front door. They had cops everywhere. I mean, Bieber's, like, flying around in his freaking McLaren. I'm like, really, dude? You're gonna, and his parents were there, right? I guess he lives about an, an hour or two away. Right? He's, a, he's a Canadian. Oh, and, yeah, uh, he's from Toronto, right? Yeah, or he's from, somewhere near. Yeah, like an hour outside of Toronto. But yeah. I mean, and then he gets in a taxi. He he does these pranks where he'll 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 Send hail a, he'll a hail decoy, a cab right? and he'll drive around the block waving at everybody. You know, he's like he's just <laughs> he did it in Europe. He was with us. pretty we crazy, were, you know. Yeah. I mean, but the girls would would stay there like it. They'd be there at eight o'clock. I was I I actually golfed at. Uh, Angus Glen, I, I like to play golf there. Mm -hmm. They have a beautiful golf course about an hour north of, of uh, Toronto. And so 
I wake up with my golf bag, you know, trying to get out of the hotel, yeah. and there are these Bieber fans, you know? I'm like, don't you guys sleep? I mean, you know, they don't, they don't sleep. They don't sleep. <laughs> and what are you, what are you going to get out of this by seeing Bieber? I don't, I don't, I don't get. He's not going to sign anything. Huh? He's not going to sign anything. I don't think you know. And then, what, where, the probably the, the the lowest point of staying in Toronto was when my assistant role manager actually wanted his autograph. That was. What? I was oh, like, Are you serious? <laughs> tell me. How did tell, I tell you the joke that we just heard? What's that? Can I just start going for go? Yeah, yeah, we're rolling. All right. Hey, everybody. Pat Monahan here with uh, this Patcast. I'm not sure what number it is, but I'm here with one of my all-time favorite human beings, musicians, <laughs> Jonathan Kane from uh, an amazing Bay Area band and world uh, renowned band called Journey. I wanted to start tonight by telling you a joke that I just heard from John Oates from the great Holland Oates. I love John Oates. He lives in Nashville, you know. Yeah, he's a lovely guy. That's my hometown now. So, and it's your hometown now. And I'm never there, so and you're never I need there. to meet him at some point. You, know? you tour like mad. Uh, if you're going to be there tomorrow... <laughs> I won't. No, we're no, still on the road. Bro. No, you're going no, to be here at our oh, show yeah. tomorrow. I'll meet him tomorrow. That'd be great. Oh, oh, that's man, awesome. man it'd be great if we could have you come out for the wait, too. Would, would well. you want to sing on the wait with us? Or play piano or anything. I could, I'm sure I could do it. Sure. That'd be great. Can okay, organ? cool. Hammond I can play organ. Week? It's a okay. date. Can I play organ? I meant, would you, you please think? play organ with me? Is what I meant. I to would say. love to. Gret's what no, I meant. Here's a joke. I'll follow you, bro. Uh, <laughs> guitar player, a uh, lighting technician. Is he a lighting technician? No, no, no. This, this is the joke. joke. Okay, okay. A guitar player. I was like, a guitar player, a lighting technician, and a tour manager are walking down the beach. Yeah. They see a bottle. They pick it up. They decide to rub it. A genie comes out. Genie says, I've been in prison for 10,000 years. I am going to grant you each one wish. So the guitar player is very excited. He's like, I know exactly what I want. I want I want to be on a desert island w- with the, the most three of most amazing, beautiful broads to just have sex with all the time. Poof. Guitar player is gone. The lighting technician is like, okay. He's a little smarter. But taking his time, he's like, I love all that. I want all that. But I would also like $5 million. And also, any you know human necessity that I want, I want access to it all. Poof, gone. Uh, tour manager's the last one. He goes, all right, you have one wish. He goes, my wish is you get those two assholes in the lobby in 10 minutes because we got <laughs> shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's a classic that sounds like our guy that sounds like Scotty Ross oh yeah, my god it's everybody's guy alright no I love it and so man there's so much uh, there's so much to cover with you I mean you're you're in one of the bands that I, I find to be one of the all time great rock and roll bands mm-hmm. and uh, I just Thank wonder you. if you feel like that you know what I I am so uh, in a grateful spot right now I mean I'm probably it's it's surreal for me. I, I went on vacation with my family to Europe. We were over there with touring with White Snake. Uh, in, in Europe, we decided to make a little Chevy Chase, you know, family. And David Coverdale, White Snake, David was he there? Yeah, oh, yeah he was awesome. He called me hot stuff. I was a little worried about that. And he kissed <laughs> oh. me on the lips. Yeah, don't get worried. That's it just was a, a little it's wor- a David it Coverdale thing. You know, when you get kissed on the lips and called hot stuff, I go, David, really? <laughs> anyway, so but anyway, so I, we, we had this great vacation, and then you know we had a couple of gigs when I came back in Florida, and I had some time off to just be with my family, and I went back on the road. And we played this gig at Universal for uh, Cisco, you know the corporate gigs mm-hmm. for like twenty thousand people, and and we don't miss a note. We're absolutely like the, the Blue Angels this night. We're perfect. <laughs> Arnell sings his ass off. Neil's playing it, and I have to go. Oh, that's right. I do this. For a living, this is my job, you know, and I get to do this. I mean, so that's like putting on the cape and coming out of the phone booth, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like, really? You know, Clark Kent and, and Weekend Warrior, and I fly back to Nashville going, I get stars in my eyes, you know, from the, it, it hits you, you know, that you you get to do this. You get to do this amazing thing and turn people on, make them smile, make them cheer, just like you guys do. It's really cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It is. How much uh, of your heart is still in San Francisco? Because that's basically where your career got started, you know, even it's, though it's you're true. from Chicago. It's true. And I and I, I use the wine uh, business as, as my, my uh, anchor there. I have a partner, Dennis Delamontagna, and... Uh, we started up making uh, finale wine like 
2006. It's called Finale? Finale. Okay. Finale.com. You can go check our wines oh, great. out. Yeah. And, you know, we do Pinot Noir. We do Cabernet Sauvignon out of Napa. I just uh, did a Russian River Chardonnay with Dennis. Oh, wow. That sounds nice. And so it's really fun. It's a, it's a cool little wow. project. I get a little royalty on it. I don't, you know... I don't own any land, but, but I do. But you're not doing it. You're doing it like trains doing it. You're doing it because it's quality wine. It's, it's quality. Not, it's not Passion. a novelty thing. But but the coolest part of the California piece was that when I sold my house, and I'd lived in the Bay Area for 30 years. Yeah. Same house. Wow. What and part of the Bay Area? Novato. Mm, Marin right. County. So... The joke was, you know, that hill back there behind your house should be a vineyard for years and years. Yeah. You know, my stockbroker used to tell me, hey, you would have planted some grapes up there. Well, my wife said, we're blown with the backyard. I, I need to fix this pool. It's all a mess. So, you know, in come the bulldozers and everything. Mm-hmm. And I said, can we tear us that, that hillside? I'm, I'm going to plant a vineyard. Because now I have my partner, we're making wine, and I have a crew that can go in there and, and harvest it and plant it. And yeah. we did a field blend of Pinot Noir in a quarter of an acre in Nevada. Wow. A perfect sun, perfect, you know, every uh, four o'clock every night, uh, th- it would run us off into the house because of this cooling that would happen, you know. So I thought, this is perfect. We did a soil sample. It was a perfect acidity for Pinot Noir. So I planted 200 Pinot plants, and now. This little vineyard is cranking out shit that's better than they're doing up there in Russian River. <laughs> wow, it's man. It's crazy. That's great. And it's got like an amazing- uh, How many cases will you get? 24. 24 and I, cases. And I named it after my wife because <laughs> St. Elizabeth, who I, I adore my wife, and she was the one that said, I'm going to blow up the backyard. And I said, all right, well, if you're going to blow up the backyard, you, be- you better let me you know, plant that vineyard. And the guy that bought my house calls me out of the blue and says- what am I to do with this vineyard? And I said, well, it's your, your problem now. I sold you the house. And he said, ah, I don't know what to do. I, you know, I need, I, need, uh, I need guidance. Why don't you make the wine? I said, so let me get this right. You bought the house for me, and you want me to make the wine off your hill, and that's it? And I just pay for my crew? Yeah. So <sighs> we're continuing. We're in our eighth. Oh, that's yeah, cool. So it, you know, I had my cake and, and what is too. it called? It's called St. Elizabeth. St. Elizabeth, and it's part of the Finale brand. But we only do 24 cases. But that's cases. a small crop. It it's must $100 be real. a bottle. Yeah, I was going to say $100 that's high quality oh. But wine. it is getting better and better. I had the, I had the first, uh, the six, they call it. Does it get rated and it's in no, some no, of no, the no, wine we don't magazines? Do that. We don't, see, you don't do that when you have small amounts of wine. You never go for the ratings because you won't have any left. And this is a wine I like to share with my friends, with my good friends. I'm a friend. And you don't have to have some of this. <laughs> I am a very good got, friend. We got it in the bottle, Pat. <laughs> I'm and, one and, of your 24 friends. Badass. <laughs> no. I, yeah, know, I, I love I, that. I happen to really feel like it was a gift uh, for being a steward at that land for all those years. Yeah, that's that really cool. That he pulls me up out of the blue. And, and, and Lowry's just an amazing man. I'm going to see him in town. He's coming to the show. He's my friend. Yeah, that's great. But, but funny, funny story, I went to check last year on the vineyard because I had a hunch that it was ready to be picked because and my, you know well you my wine to- buddies were, were were crushing you know they were crushing yeah up in Sonoma and I said well we're hotter than Sonoma I mean we're down you know we have more, more sunshine and stuff so I go in there I know the code the gate code <laughs> so I punch the gate code and I'm in there looking at the and I'm tasting the fruit yeah and he catches me he you know he, he taps me on the shoulder he goes are you stalking me man <laughs> I said I said, Larry, I'm just here to check out, you know, the the vineyard, and I said, I think it's we pick it tomorrow. I wow, said, I'm yeah. going to get the guys here and get wow. these grapes before the birds eat them. The other right. problem we have with this vineyard is it's the only vineyard around, so we had trouble with with varmints and birds and bees. They come and they attack your vineyard because you're the only game in town. So we netted it, and they still they're dive bombing at it. So. Wow, two years crazy. ago, don't two, you? What are those sparkly things? Yeah, that, they well, they the kind shimmery. of scare the crows. Yeah, but they don't really do much. So I decided I was going to do. I read about cougar urine, all that shit. <laughs> so I said to my the guy that bought my house, I said, I, I got an idea. I said, I've seen it. They have these fake coyotes. They're like stuffed, you know. So we're gonna we're gonna put this stuffed coyote on the hill and scare the crap out of all these you know vermin. Did it work? Come, it did work until a raccoon beat the shit out of him one night. Oh. Defenseless. Right. 
stripped him of all of his fur. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Sent, sent Butch back to <laughs> so back back and you need we a new had, stuffed we had a animal. New butch, but it's funny now that the the vineyard's been there, the the, the animals seem to accept it, and they're not, they're not so crazy. They kind of went into a frenzy for a while. Like, oh my God, we got to eat this. And now they just seem to be cool about it. They accept it. We still get the, you know, occasional, but it's, it's a really interesting, when you become a gentleman winemaker, which I'm kind of a gentleman winemaker, and you don't have a lot of land, I can just imagine having 50 acres, you know? I mean, I, I would be stressed out of my mind every year because yeah. you say you have Mother Nature, you know, well, you plus have the you're frost. on the road all the time. Yeah, I mean, the so last time I saw you, you were in London. What, you were on your way to Germany. Right. So do you, uh, you know, we don't do well in Germany. Yeah. Uh, but I think maybe you started when maybe the air was a little uh, easier to get in. And now you probably still have a massive fan base in Germany. Well, how do, how do you, how do you I feel about it I got to tell you, Pat, we're not that big in Germany. We do a festival there. Okay. Hmm. Out on the Rhine River. What does Europe look like for Journey at the and Arnell? Yeah. Uh, just so for yeah. people who may not know, I mean, Arnell is a Filipino man, right. Who you found? Right. How did you find him? Arnell was, you know, well, there's a. I got to tell you, there's a movie out. There's a documentary mm-hmm. that's out called Every Man's Journey. Don't stop believing, and uh, that kind of tells the story that you know I'm going to give you a little thumbnail, but um, it's a great documentary. It's available on iTunes. If you ever need any encouragement about a dream come true, you watch this movie. And, and you watch this kid from the Philippines. He's not a kid. He's 40 years old. He looks like a kid because he stays so nice. But um, <laughs> no, he's a cl- you watch him become a, from a club singer to a rock star. Yeah. Yeah. In the movie, he has to accept the role. And he is so authentic in it, in, in, in the, the actual growth of how do you fill those shoes you know, and it was very difficult for him at first to adjust to uh, becoming a trained circus animal like we are. Uh, the time zone, the time changes, all of this stuff, the, the orientation of his life. He was a homeless kid in the Philippines, lost his mom when he was very young. But um, how did you know that he could sing? We Journey saw him songs? on YouTube, and because it was Neil Journey Sean. songs are so hard to so sing. So my brother, my brother, you know, when we went down with Steve Jerry, God bless Steve Jerry. I love Steve, you know, and 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 I should put a little love out there for eight years that he mm-hmm. gave gave us and put us back on the map. I mean, and I used to worry about his life. I worried about him getting <laughs> shot because people were so irate about this whole, you know, Journey of Steve Perry, you know, and and so Steve endured this whole time where we went from theaters and clubs, we had to prove ourselves, you know, and do this whole thing. So we should put that in there. And then, you know, so he, his voice goes out and he gets this horrible uh, uh, throat infection. It's a candidiasis, which is a yeast infection of the vocal cords. And it's nasty. And he had it a lot of times. It kept coming back, coming back. We didn't know what it was, but it is a real deal. It's uh, and it'll take you out, and it, and it and it prevents your vocal cords from synchronizing. Mm. Very, very bad for a singer. Unfortunate for him. Unfortunate for us. So we were out without a singer, and and Walmart was at us for an album. We had signed a deal to say, okay, we're gonna make the uh, a Journey album for Walmart, but now we, our singer's gone, and we have this contract. We want to fulfill it. So not only. We can't just get a guy to fill in. Now, Jeff Scott Soto came in. He sat in, you know, but he wasn't the guy. I knew he wasn't the guy. He just helped us. And Steve mm-hmm. Perry in the middle of the Def Leppard tour. Steve Perry's not an option. Steve Perry has retired at this point, mm. and um, he has uh, some health issues, you know, that he's come uh, forward on the Internet and actually, you know, mm-hmm. said what it was. And I don't need, we didn't need to go into that, but he, he, had a, he has like kind of a real chronic condition that prevents him from being effective on the road. You know, that's, mm. it'll, it'll come and go. And that's kind of where we are in the music world. We have to be silent. Is without the road, you're kind of empty. Yeah, because we're not selling CDs anymore. Oh, yeah. Um, so Arnell, you know, Neil and I start trolling YouTube because my brother says, YouTube, YouTube. I'm like, I like that idea. So we found some singers that were pretty good. But they were scary because they were like Perry clones. I go, yeah. there already was a Steve. We can't do this Steve thing again, you know. And um, we had we had uh, a Steve who kind of looked like, you know, Steve Perry. And people would sometimes go up to Steve or Jerry and say, I like your perm. 
because yeah. he had the nose. Curly hair. You know, he was even the same sign. It was crazy. But Steve had his own shtick, and, and he was a great front man. We, we, we loved the heck out of him. Uh, but uh, it was sad to see him go. We knew we needed to do something else. And so Neil became obsessed. And we tried a couple of these other guys, and it was like, oh, God, we can't do this, you know? So we just kind of... I ended it, and I said, you keep looking, Neil. You, you know, you'll find it. And Because he was obsessed. He's like, I'm going to find something. And he kept Neil looking. Neil Sean is responsible for yeah. some of the greatest solos oh, in yeah. rock history. No, Mr. Melody Man. I mean, he, he's always been Mr. But so he, find on, he finds Arnell, and he you know, calls me up, and I've had a bottle of wine, and I'm coming home from dinner, and he's <laughs> like, it's, it's midnight, and he goes, click on this, this YouTube link. You know, yeah. You're, you're going to see Arnell. So I go, and it's, it's Manila, the Hard Rock Cafe, and I'm like, I call him back, O'Neal. You know how far Manila is? I go, we got Homeland Security. It's like 300 how, miles. Yeah. How, it's how in the hell? We got Homeland Security. How are we going to get this guy over here? <laughs> For what? For, you know, and he says, don't worry about it, man. I said, and does he even speak English? Mm. You know, what does, song did you hear him sing? I, Mostly I, Filipino faithfully. people speak English very I, I, well. And, and actually, they have the biggest teaching uh, school for the, in Asia in Manila. Mm. Filipino mm. people are my favorite people oh, on the planet. No, they're, like, I, I come to find out. That's just me being from Chicago. What do I know? I I'm, live outside of Seattle mm, currently. Yeah. Many, many Filipino people. Smart. They are the sweetest, hardest working. I mean, yep. is it really? And they got a heart of gold. Mm. So yeah. anyway, so Arnell turns out, you know, that Neil gets in touch with him. And, and these videos were posted. And the first one I saw him sing was Faithfully. Faithfully, yeah. And he's sitting in this club, little Arnell. I mean, he's this tiny little thing. He's mm-hmm. like five, six or something. Yeah. And he's singing his heart out. And he goes to the end and hits every stinking note. And I'm like, this wasn't Pro Tool. You know, this is live. And so I go back to him. I go, he's got amazing pipes. Uh, but how do we get him over here? You know? And so... Uh, Neil said, "Well, good. I'm glad you like him." I love your thinking. Like you, you, you're thinking that to get a human being from the Philippines to the, the United States and is more think- than just like, "Here's my passport. Yeah. I'm going to go to the United States for a minute." Like, this is crazy. it had to be bigger than that. It was crazy. Right? Right? And and the the funny story was that um, our management jumped through hoops to get Arnell a visa to get him. It took six weeks. Oh, but he needed a visa just to come over? Yes, he needed one. Oh, yeah. that's well, insane. Exactly. Okay, well, and now that, I get so, it. And he had, and, and was even weirder was, it, it, six weeks later, um, you know. Didn't you play like a, you, here's what I would have done if I was your manager, because yeah. I would be an amazing manager. Yeah. <laughs> I would have gotten, gotten the YouTube footage of him. Yeah. I would have taken it right to the U.S. government and said, watch this motherfucker sing. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker needs to well, be here now. Well, you know, and what, then they would have been like, "Here's the visa." You know, just like funny, that. You know what's funny though? <laughs> when he went to get the visa stamped in the office in in Manila, the guy that was the officer in charge says, "I know who you are. I've seen your band. That's called the Zoo." Oh, he wow. goes, "I never seen you sing any journey. Sing Wheel in the Sky for me." Right in the office. Are you shitting for me? For real, for real. Wheel in the sky. So that's what he did. Keeps on tap. Man, I did it in the right key. Right. <laughs> so there's Arnell in the office, and he looks at Arnell and he goes, boom. Good wow. Luck. Good See? luck. So I'm Arnell, telling you, man, the U.S. government rocks. But, I mean, literally, they like so to rock. He, he comes over and he can't get a grip on the time zone change because it's, you know, 15 hours. So we're asking him to sing in the afternoon and it's like four in the morning for him and he's in his sleep mode. Now he can't sleep. So we're uh, at rehearsal and he's shot from singing at the Hard Rock Cafe with no in-ear monitors. No monitor. He said, he told me he had no monitors. He was singing off the house. So right. his voice was toasted. I was like, dude, Let's gotta get you some sleep, you know, and, and it was like I was kinda like, mm, I don't know. Well, let <laughs> me tell you. You know, we, we got this guy all the way over here, but in all fairness, he needed a week, right? Yeah. You gotta give him the week. Yeah. So boy, week uh, day went by, day went by, he got better and better. And I tried not to push it too much. I said, just sing for a little bit for us and let's hear this song and what else do you know? Well, he knew a lot of our songs. He knew a lot of and it turned out Steve Perry was his favorite singer. Sure, he's a lot of and people's favorite I said, singer. Well then, you know this guy's going to come around, and by the time the week the week was over, we got him in the studio, at my house. I had a full on recording studio in Novato, next to the vineyard, um, which I hated to sell, by the way. Um, anyway, he's singing for us, and I'm like, 
I think we found our guy. I mean, when I heard him in the studio on a mic, you know, you know, in, in a mm-hmm. real studio environment, I said, we found our boy. Because uh, it was better. And I made him learn a song that we had written that, you know, Steve had sung that we never put on a record. And I said, learn a song for tomorrow. Let's hear what you do with it. And he came in there and sang this song. And we got chill bumps. We we're like, Neil and I were sitting there going, okay, this is the guy. You know? can, can I, can yeah. I go back to the beginning? Because... You had such a unique setup. The first song uh, that I ever remember hearing, you have two singers. What do you uh, mean? This well, is like in the when beginning. Greg, when Greg was in the band. This is like the beginning yeah, yeah. of Journey. It, yeah. well, Greg was first, and then Steve so, came in later. Right. So Greg yeah. is singing all like the, the verse lines or right. whatever, and right. then Steve Perry starts coming in. Mm-hmm. That was a very unique thing. It and was. then Greg is no longer right. uh, a part of the band. Right. Which was weird. Why is that? Well, they had a, they had a falling out. I mean, Greg, it was always the two Greg. of them had a falling yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Where did you find each other in the band, and like, where did everybody come from? Because I don't really know the story of Journey and how it started. It's, All right, it's well, so, incarnation. Well. You know, Journey came out of Santana. Basically, I was Greg. You guys were all Carlos's band. No, Neil, no not me. Neil not and me. Greg. Neil and Greg were in Santana. Okay, so, so let's go back. To Greg Sa- was Santana's Keyboard singer. Player. He sang on Black Magic Woman. Yeah, that's oh, him. But he's a singer. You're playing. He's, he's a singer. I'm not in the band. Okay, so he's playing piano. So now you have two piano players. No, no, no. He I, was in the I replaced Greg. You were in the babies? Yes. <laughs> Are you fucking out of your mind? No, dude. I didn't know that. The babies open for he didn't journey, do, right? He didn't do any research, dude, I can I tell. No, no so, I did a lot of research, but I thought I already knew no, like, no. a lot Greg, of the story. Greg, but you were in the, the beginning journey, of the babies? Right? The babies. Well, no, I, I replaced... Here's the funny thing, Pat. I replaced two keyboard players. Okay. Right? Which I so I'm so, so you're that, just bragging right now. <laughs> I did. No, Stay I did. My gig, brother. I'm just saying that I got that, and that, I got more than that. Okay, so, <laughs> which I did, which I kind of did. You know, and the babies got me. I don't know. I had to audition. It was funny. 1978 or 77 was it? I I had done baby, a solo baby, album. Baby, and you all love me. Yeah, that guy's head a first. Crazy yeah. great singer. John Waite. Back on my feet again. Man. Okay, so the Back way the story on my goes. Feet again. Did you write that song? Uh, I. Yeah, I had a big part in that one, but I didn't write it, and I'll tell you in a minute. But so, I'm I'm a starving songwriter. I got I had an album on Bearsville. It, it had a boat anchor. It went down like all of them did. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, unless I, you know, <laughs> I can sing. I'm not a lead singer. I'm not a frontman. I'm a pretty good songwriter. You know. So the Warner Brothers said goodbye. See you later. So I kept writing. I got a day job. I worked at Cal Stereo. You know. Wow in the valley for about two years and I get this phone call from this guy uh, Robbie Patton he says uh, well I write for Fleetwood Mac and I'd like to write with you I really like your album you do? yeah I like oh you're the only one but anyway <laughs> so so I write with Robbie Patton and he tells me about a baby's audition he said you know and he's English and they're English and the English kind of all stay together they have their little circle so Robbie was a pretty cool guy he had it all together and he goes go to the audition and I said but Rob man those guys wear earrings and makeup and shit. They're like a glam band. He goes, you're a rocker. Go do it, you know? So I went, you know, he kind of pushed me right into the audition. I went there, and all they wanted to sing was Otis, uh, was uh, uh, Mustang Sally. It was like Wilson Pickett songs. John wanted to just well, do soul really, music. Well, uh, I know all, all these stuff. songs. I know everything, you know, because I played in club bands for like 15 years in Chicago, so I knew every song they threw at it. And, and he knows everything, pretty much, I do. And and then I, what, <laughs> when they played- But what, key and guitar. Yeah, but then they yeah. wanted a guitar. They Can you play guitar? And I said, I said I like that song Head First that you guys got out. And I said, because they had made Head First. Yeah, that's I a said, great uh, song. I used to cover I'll that. plug in electric. They go, well, you're a keyboard player. I said, watch me. So, you know, I put, I plugged watch into me. a Marshall. And you that sound was like it. Jerry. <laughs> and I just started playing guitar. And they're like, okay, you got it, you know. So, um, it, but it was the song I had written at the audition called Stick to Your Guns, which uh, it never came out uh, as a... Uh, on, on the babies, they wanted to put on the babies album, but we made such a pop album. It was such a that my song was a real bluesy album, you know. And actually, Joe Bonamassa, I'm going to write with him on in September. Mm-hmm. I'm actually going to show them this song, and and maybe he'll want to do it because I think somebody should do this song that yeah. that made you know it. It was the the only reason they remembered me was my song because mm-hmm. they had forty keyboard players audition. Holy shit! Yeah, and John was playing bass at that time. 
And John Waite. Yeah, yeah. Played mm-hmm. bass. Right. But he wasn't playing good bass. Of course was, not. Because he was Because he's a singer. And I looked in and one, we, we were auditioning over at SIR on Sunset Boulevard. And I said, John, we're taking a lunch break. I said, can I go find a bass player across the street or something? Just, I just want to see what, what you'd be like without the bass in your hand. You know, I, I don't, I'm not getting it. So I go across the street to uh, Nadine's guitar shop. <laughs> I know. And this crazy? is a true story. Nadine's guitar shop, and I go, okay, uh, anybody play bass here? <laughs> <laughs> and who's at the counter but Ricky Phillips? Right. And Ricky says, uh, as a matter of fact, I do play bass. And I said, well, we're, we're, uh, I'm, I'm working over the babies, you know, oh, the babies. I said, yeah, be over there in 10 minutes. You got your bass here? Yeah. So he plugs in. Next huh. thing you know, we're, we're jamming, and <laughs> it is magic. We got magic going, and John's singing. And it is rocking. It like like it never rocked, you know. He could sing because he could sing, and, and he's Ricky, an amazing singer. And Ricky could actually mm-hmm. rock that bass, you know, with Tony. And they had this wonderful feel together. And all of a sudden, the band was born. Wow. We had a new new babies, nice. new improved babies. And John and you know was happy, and we went on to do you know Union Jacks, yeah. Midnight Rendezvous. Love that song. Uh, we yeah, got on the edge. so we did two babies albums, and then. You know, we went on the road with Journey. They, Journey loved Union Jacks, and they said, will you, um, you know, open up for us? And we were thrilled to be with Journey. I didn't, I kind of had a Journey album back in the 70s. I had the first one, I bought Infinity, right? So right. I knew the band, but I was curious. I'm like, okay, cool. So it was San Diego, and it was that big old dome that they used to have, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And, and so that was our first gig. And so we opened up for Journey for four months. They did it a Departure tour, and they f- and they recorded Captured, hmm. the live album, while we were on the road. With Steve them. and Greg are both in the band, right? And Ross and, and Ross Steve and Steve Smith and Steve Smith on drum, right? And so Steve Smith, super great. The drummer. crazy thing is, I I want to stick around and watch this thing go down every night. I mean, the rest of the guys are going pulling chicks, you know, like they did. <laughs> and I'm like, something about this journey thing. I'm I'm fat. I'm this, that voice, that Perry voice, I yeah. wanted to hear it. Yeah. Can he do that every night? He did it. Yeah. Wow. He did it. And I'd sit there with my ex-wife at the time, and I said, I don't believe this. I mean, this guy is a machine. He was unbelievable. Night after night after night. So then I started getting invited to dinner, at in, in band dinners, you know. Mm-hmm. And they, they just didn't have catering. They had full-on, you know. Like their road manager was a foodie, so they had the full table set with the silverware and it was different. So I sat at the journey table early on, hmm. not knowing what what exactly was going on. And one night they drove me home in a limo and they were teasing about being the next keyboard player. Wouldn't you like to be the next keyboard player in Journey? And I'm like, Oh shut up, you know? I'm the babies. <laughs> well, they had already planned it, you know. They were really? gonna draft me. And I didn't know how they were going to draft me, but they had plans for me. They were going to steal me away from the babies. Really? So one afternoon, John Waite announces at lunchtime that he's going to leave the babies. Unbeknownst to us, we're like, wow. I'm going solo. I own, we owe too much money to Chrysalis Records. It's like being in the army. We'll never, ever, and he, you know, literally owed, you know, almost a million dollars. They were in a million dollars in debt because they had poor management. Sure. Their management ran them into the that ground, was, did make know, poor the decisions. so many artists. Poor decisions. And so, you know, here's John, you know, saying, I'm out. And I'm sitting at lunch like choking on a sandwich going, really? <laughs> You're going to... And so I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm just... How old are you? I'm 28. And, and I think I made the big time, right? Meanwhile, my father back in Chicago says, it's just a stepping stone, John, just a stepping you know, <laughs> the You know, the great shaman, my father. So I'm like, Dad, this is, this is big time rock and roll. I've never done anything. I mean, we were, we're on the Alice Cooper tour. We played with ACDC. We opened for all these great bands, Sticks, you know mm-hmm. I mean? And, and we, we opened for everybody that was anybody in rock and roll in the 70s. We did. Wow. Including Journey. And uh, the crazy thing was I get a call. In, in the summer of like 1979 or 80, 19, 1980, and I didn't have any money left because John had hurt himself. He fell over some uh, cable and had an ACL knee injury, and we're out. John Lennon gets shot. They won't play our music anymore. There's a moratorium. Babies are gone, you know. And without, wow. without the road and, and without, you know, the live gigs, we don't have any money. So Dr. Pepper says, 
we want the babies to do a Dr. Pepper commercial. So John hobbles in, you know, and we do this Dr. Pepper commercial for 30000 pays pays the rent, and I'm, I'm going, geez, now what, you know? So I get a phone call right after we do the Dr. Pepper commercial, and it's Journey. And they say, we want you to be our new keyboard player, out of the blue. And I said, well, when's the audition? There is no audition. Was Greg You're, still in the band? No. Okay. They had so already, he's out. Yeah. They had already left. They already said, because, right. because of the fact that he wanted to raise a family, you know, there was a tension between, mm-hmm. you know, p- people in the band. And is his, there still? His, no, not with us. No, we're good. Like, no. Arnell is like the, sw- I mean, we'll get. No, we don't have we'll, any attention, but that's how it happened. I mean, it was just kind of one of those things Greg needed to get off the road. Yeah. His wife didn't want him on the road. Um, they wanted, to, he had enough money from the Santana days. And I think, you know, there was just a lot of kind of weird feelings. And they just said, why don't you just retire? And we're going to take Jonathan. So, so Greg said, I, I think that's a great choice. He mm-hmm. kind of, you know, gave them his blessing. Are you okay with Jonathan in the band? Yeah. Right. And Greg said, absolutely. I've seen his act oh, cool. for four months. That's I great. I watched that guy, and he's the perfect guy to be in this band. So Greg gave me his blessing, you know, and, and I was really happy about that. So I came in on a good note. You know, yeah. there wasn't any bad blood between us. Yeah, yeah that's, that's great. That's how it happened. And so uh, here you are as Journey. Right. And... Now things are really cooking because you really are helping these guys write the biggest songs. But of their we didn't lives. know that. See, Pat, here's the thing: they call me up there, you know, and I hadn't written a song. Now, what I did do was jam with Neil a lot, mm-hmm. and we, we. This is how young we were. We had energy after the gig to go kick people off their instruments and go jam. Right. I'm thinking about it now, going, I would, I wouldn't want to go out and jam right now. I'm going to soak <laughs> yeah. my fingers in some ice and I'm going to go to sleep. But we used to go out, you know, and jam. And Neil and I, and this is the coolest. I don't know if anybody saw this or remembers this, but we had Steve Perry on drums. He he played oh, yeah. decent. He, he was a he soul a drummer. drummer. He right. R and B drummer, great drummer. So Steve Perry would go on the drums because he never got to play anymore, right? So he wanted to play drums. Ricky would play bass, Neil would play guitar, and John would be the front man. And would sing, of course, Wilson Pickett songs, you know, Midnight Hour and all that stuff. And, you know, I'd be like keyboards, and Neil and I would be jamming, and he, and then we'd go fuse off and, you know, do some crazy mm-hmm. stuff. And he'd look at me like, you got me, don't you? I got everything you got. <laughs> you know, so I always had him. No matter how yeah. out he wanted to go, I'd go out there with him, and he'd go, you know more than just, yeah, the babies. I go, I kind of do. Yeah. I went to Conservatory of Chicago, dude, and played a lot of jazz, and you know, and I saw all the greats in Chicago growing up. So what was cool about it was that we already had that background together, and you know, it was such a neat thing. We had this kind of chemistry together. So I go on up there to San Francisco to write the Escape album. Jeez. They pick me up and say- That wasn't successful. No, but they told me, the album's going to be called Escape. Here's your- Here's your rig. They they flew my rig up there. I went to San Francisco. They they got me a, a house to live in. They got me a rental car. Journey was an iconic, you know, rock and roll organization. They had their own building. Herbie Herbert was, you know, an icon in the business. Had gone from being a guitar roadie yeah. to uh, you know, uh, lighting. And we brought video. Journey actually was the first band to to invent video inside. So Herbie's idea was, we're going to bring big IMAX screens and we're going to, because we used to play these giant places like, you know, the Astrodome and we'd look like little ants down there. And, you know, he Mm -hmm. said, man, I want to bring, so Nocturne Video was part of Journey's creation. Wow. So we were all involved. We all kind of put money into it, you know, and I found that out when I got there that, that Herbie Herbert was pretty much the mastermind behind Journey. He had, he had actually drafted Steve Perry who the guys weren't sure about. Yeah. And uh, he kind of just said, this is your lead singer. Listen to me. You know, Columbia's going to love this, you know, because they were told that if they didn't get a new lead singer, they were off the label. Hmm. So Herbie said, I just got a tape. I found the guy. And, and what was he doing before he, he was He was singing? in a band called The Alien Project. Steve was in The Alien Project, about ready to get signed. To and is he a Bay Area kid too? San Joaquin Valley. So he, you know, he's just, he's like from Hanford, Hanford, California. Okay. And his bass player was tragically killed in a car accident. Oh, weird. And they were like the, you know. How about the, Neil Sean? Where's he from? Neil's from New Jersey. 
Huh. His father was an Air Force guy. Hmm. How uh, did it end up in San Francisco? Um, or I think Herbie. They started out as the Golden Gate Rhythm Section. Oh, wow. That's what the name of the band was. Oh, well, and, then, and then the Santana thing, because Santana, Carlos and, is and the And Ross area, came right? from, believe it or not, Steve Miller Band. Oh, right. So You know, well, Steve Miller. All yeah, right. Steve Miller That's, Band. He played bass for Steve Miller. Steve Miller the blues owns band. an island yeah. in the San Juan Islands. Right. Did you We're know We're going to tour with them next year, by the way. Are you really? Yeah, it's going to be See, Steve. There's a, there's, a couple of, there's a couple of things that I wanted to mention, because uh, just to give you a, a break, and you can have some wine while I talk for a second. <laughs> I love it. Because... Uh, I'm not nearly as entertaining as you. No, you are. But what I find is here are the thousand bands that, you know, have come up and done similar things, Mm -hmm. you know, in some ways, like Foreigner. Right. Foreigner, they have a new singer. Right. And what I was told is that he had a learning curve where he needed a year of, like, he had to, he had to be taught we don't do it that way. Exactly. You know, we're not tough guys who exactly. who take themselves too seriously exactly. and when we need catered. We're a working band. Right. You need to learn how to do that if you're going to be in this project. It was Arnell very difficult. didn't need to do that. Well, he had some things. That there was a learning curve for him? There was a learning curve. I think Arnell, the biggest problem for him was the time zone change. The sl- but when, that's, you know, that's, when sleep, but when you can't sleep, you can't sing. You know that. Sure, you man. need your sleep. He if, knows that. If you're only singing five hours a night, uh, sleeping five hours a night, yeah. your voice goes quickly. Sure. And 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 he found he had to learn how to to you know relax his but mind. It wasn't an attitude. He wanted to do well. Arnell has. All right, man. That guy. Let me is, just say, I've about, seen that guy in lobbies, and he's like, "Hey, bad," you know, like he comes out, of, he'll Arnell, jump out of an airplane yeah. to say hello to you. Arnell he's the Pineda makes, guy ever. makes our camp a better camp, absolutely, because he's the humble man. He he has a heart of gold, and that's why Journey works right now. Exactly, I swear, man. And I'm I telling always you, say his attitude. Makes no, it. I told him last night. We were in Vegas last night, and I said, "When you go, I go." Huh? I said, "This is this is the, this is it." And then he said, "We're leaving then." <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, but I said, "When you want to hang it up, I'm going to hang it up oh, because that's I cool. I don't want to do this again." Yeah, uh, yeah, and because that's how much I love him, and I think he's he's brought us so much life. And, and positive and energy. Positive and positive energy. And he's a humble man. You know, when he first came in, you know, and he saw Neil Sean's Ferrari and, you know, and my $150,000 Fazioli piano, he was like, what? You know, <laughs> what are you doing here? You know, he had that money for him was like, ah, and now and he's a millionaire. Uh, it's twice over, you know, three times. I wonder, he's an equal member of Journey. Yeah. We did not pimp him we didn't do any of that bullshit like you're the new guy we're gonna screw you you know we're gonna take all the money because you're <laughs> don't the new- tell jerry that yeah. i'm trying to you're pull the some new shit guy over on jerry. talking about that no when it's the lead singer pat you know how much important a lead singer he gets an equal share i mean cool. we weren't gonna do that with him Neil i think and I, that, discussed I think that. i think that it's the only way to make a long-term relationship absolutely if you were if you wanted it to be a four-year thing where he was going to bail afterwards then you can go ahead and take advantage of why him. would but you do that though I mean, if you, you found, found a life you with found this guy. a guy you found a guy you know and when he's saying you well, know that's, that, but that's wisdom it's age that gives you that like, yeah, you guys well, have been through guys. a lot of bullshit to make and there's that other choice. bands that do it differently you know and and, and I, you, I just put and it out most there. of those bands aren't doing it anymore right they're not on tour they're not you know selling thousands of tickets and and making a, a living and so I guess what I wanted to say was like, you you did something that I don't think people thought you could do, right? And you did it. I and had questions. I had I had I'm my sure reservations. That you probably did. Yeah. And I said to those guys, I said to our manager John Barrick and Neil Sean, I said, "There's going to be a city where those good old boys are going to sit back there in their chairs yeah. and going, damn, he's Asian.'" <laughs> hey, <laughs> they'll and, be like, and, and, and yeah. you know, Speaking they're going to that... fold their arms like this and go, "I ain't buying this." <laughs> that ain't Steve Perry, you right. know. And sure enough, it happened. Of it course, happened in it, cities, it has to happen. But guess what? It it would lasted for twenty minutes. Yeah. And Arnell, you know, won him over because he's that kind of guy. But he I just, mean, he if he you wins. guys weren't as signature players as you are, you're right. a massive piano player, or songwriter. Thank Neil Sean, his solos meant <laughs> you know he created Guitar Thank Heroes you. because Thank he was so good. Like if that didn't exist, if it was Steve Perry and a bunch of faceless guys, right? Arnell wouldn't have he wouldn't have been able to fill that void exactly. But your band was a band. But right. one of the other things I wanted to talk about was 
I can't imagine that there's a bigger song ever written than Don't Stop Believin'. Right. And so here you are, you had this massive success with it, but then the Sopranos use it. And was that the rebirth of the craziness? And then again with the glee? The, the crazy story about the Sopranos was that David Chase had emailed us all and said, we want Don't Stop Believin' for our closing episode, you know? And I got the email. And I just stood there and looked at. It. I just, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, Are, did, you, did you like the show already? I love the show. Oh. I couldn't watch it a lot because I had a lot of young kids. But I I was really into it. I loved. I watched it a few times. You and, didn't let your kids watch Sopranos. What uh, kind of dad? Is they it? were very young. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want anybody. I went, what's what's whack, Dad? What does that mean? They whack somebody. Uh, I got three young kids. But I thought David Chase, and I heard that the producers said, "Are you sure, Journey? Don't. Yep, yep, yep. He was sold, and you know the writer said, "Okay, it's going to be the, the song." So we knew a year in advance. Who are the writers on that song? Uh, it's Steve Perry, myself, and Neil Sean, and it's a group effort. But the seed came from my father. My father, when I was starving in L.A. He just kept saying, don't stop believing. Now I wanted, I was like, should I, shitting me? Should, I, <laughs> should I come home to Chicago? Because things aren't going so well out here. I keep dinging you for money, for rent. Right. I said, I'm working in a stereo shop. Really, Dad, what should I do? Should I come back to Chicago and just, you know, what am I, you know, he goes, you know, stay, stay your ground, don't stop believing. So Jeez, I had a spiral wow. notebook, and I wrote, in, when I was talking to him on the phone, how you doodle? I yeah. had a big doodle on an empty page. Don't stop believing. And I took the spiral notebook up to me, up to San Francisco. You're going to make me cry, man. No, this is a real deal. Is your father still alive? No, he passed on. Dude. But he did get to see, he did get to see uh, Journey plenty of times. And the, the, you know, I'm writing a memoir, actually, uh, right now. It's called, Do you like almost tear up talking about this? I could, like- I could. <laughs> But I've told the story too many times. You need uh, some more wine. <laughs> no, for real. My father was like my vision keeper. And I always tell anybody, you know, that has a dream, have a vision keeper. And I was I was given hmm, a I vision. I never heard that term before, yeah. but that's a yeah, really you, good one. You have a dream, give it to somebody, tell them to keep it. And if you ever lose your way, what were we thinking again? And my father on the phone, you know, I'm in Laurel Canyon, and he goes, remember what we said? You're going to be a success. Don't stop believing, John. Do not come back to Chicago. Stick to your guns. Stand your ground. Be that guy. And wow. I said, okay, Dad. And so I took that and I doodled all over. I wish I still had it. I just, you know, don't have the lyric. I think I gave it to Sony and they lost it. I don't know. So there it is. <laughs> no, they wanted. They called me one time. They go, hey, you want any lyrics? I'm like, yeah, well, I like them back. Well, there hey, we man, go. can we do a touch of Don't Stop Believing? How much can Let's, you sing? Can you sing any uh, of this? You sing. No, Come you got on, the voice. Man. I'll, I'll, I'll harmonize. I just, I'll harmonize. Just sing a little bit. Anyway, so we should dedicate this to Dad. This will be the acoustic version. Wait, yeah, the acoustic where are version. The words? Just you in got case the words? you don't know them, Jonathan. Come on, man. Ready? I sing it in another key, so you go ahead. Just a small town girl living in a lonely world. Took the midnight train. Just a city boy. There you go. Born and raised in South Detroit. Took a midnight train going anywhere. Take it, 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 take it. No, this is where they take it, take it, take it, take it, the train track thing, you know. A singer in a smoke room. That was Steve and I, the singer in a smell of wine. Tomatoes, fuck smile, they can share the night. It goes on and on and on and on. Strangers waiting. Walking down the boulevard. The shadows searching in the night. Streetlight people. Damn, that song's good, man. So, here's the story. So, I bring this song in. It's the title. Hey, you're welcome, neighbors. 
<laughs> Wait, are they beating on the? No. It's okay, so funny. Sorry. So I, uh, the story is that I bring in this song. I I see the 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 spiral notebook with the with the title "Don't Stop Believing," and we need one more song for the escape album. You know how that goes because I've heard your oh, story. I've heard, I know Same all about story. Okay, one more song for the escape album, and I see this. And he, John, what do you got? I said I got this. I think I got some. So I, I go back home. And I got my world sort of piano, and I, I'm like, okay, don't stop believing. You know, wow. hold on to that feeling. And I didn't have, no, 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 no. And then so I didn't know what the rest of it was. So I bring it in, and Steve and Neil like it. And they're like, great, well, we love your chords. Uh, let's just, and Steve's like, I like the way Marvin Gaye does it. He's got the verse and the and the chorus is the same chords. I'm like, so why don't you just play your piano thing and we'll, those same chords, and then we'll... That's like one of the most, it's got to yeah. maybe the most memorable piano lick of all time. But Steven, I mean, and there's a lot of Elton John stuff Here's the cool stuff thing about, that's about, good. about Steve Perry and I is that he liked my playing, you know, and he said, John, play that piano thing you do in the babies. Do that babies thing. I love that, you know? So I would just go ding, 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 ding. And he goes, now don't play any, any left hand. Let's come up with a bass line. I say that to players all the time. You? Yeah. Well, I mean, not he that does. I'm stealing from your guy, but w- sometimes left hand can confuse a singer's brain. Right. Like, and you start thinking that, and it's like, wait, I, I, I can so work he, he this melody. Up, he that came with up with a melody without any left hand. I didn't have the bass line yet. I just had those chords. Wow. No, we just had the chords. So he said, I'm going to I'm gonna sing a verse. So you had like, boom, mm, down, down, down. All right. And then you came up with... All right, that's Neil. Damn, dude. Neil brings that after Steve's got just a small town girl. Like that, right? So it's really funny. The way we, we improved it like like a, almost like a, a troupe of actors. Have you been able to tell this story before? Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like yeah. I want to be the first one that well, you say. Can pretty, you just say that this is the first time you've ever done it? This is the first it? time I've ever say, I said you know, this. We, 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 we played it before. We yeah. played it in, in our show, and we played it in the Philippines. Right. Yeah. And we had people come and sing with us. Right. But, Everybody but, and knows it. You sat in with us about a year yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. And man, I play it every night, and then you sat down and played it. And it sounds doesn't different. sound anything like the way I've No, it. you just you're a magic no, guy. Oh, thank the way, you. Even but that was Steve Perry. Our, Steve Perry said, "John, you do it." You yeah. know, I used to always ask him about click track and all. And that, I always you know. say, "Jerry, play it like John." <laughs> I, I always say that. No, I can't. No, but it's funny. And 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 you know, the greatest thing about a band like this is when you arrive somewhere and you feel that kind of love. What are you going to do? You're going to be that guy, you know. I mean, Steve had such an affinity for what I did. He got me. I got him. I do said, "Do you guys talk?" We, not anymore. I wish we did. Like but why? It, why? I don't man? know. It, well, because like when it, I went out without it him, he me out as like a. F- I, it's it's hard. It's hard. Well, wait a minute. Journey took a break, and then he was in one he of came my back, favorite yeah. bands of all time. Bad, Bad English. English, man. Yeah. I mean, when I see you smile, look at this guy. He yeah. did all. So well, it was kind of like babies and Journey together. Yeah, and that's where you got Dean. That's where we got Dean. And so the but, drummer, but I mean, in the end, Steve had trusted me to be the guy. Journey wanted to change their direction in 1981. They wanted to get away from what they had already done. They were kind of doing blues, right? Yeah. Earlier we were playing. Uh, we played this. Yeah. Which one was well, that? Yeah. 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 Right. Right. The Sam Cooke. So when you were out with these guys, they were playing this, right? Absolutely. You make me weep. Right. Sam Cooke. And wanna die just when. We tried loving, touching, squeezing each other. Right. You still do this song? Sure. Uh, Absolutely. You're tearing me apart. When I'm alone, all by myself, you're out with someone else. Bum, 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 
So I'll keep boring you, but so hey, that was if Arnell ever bails, maybe you no, and I no, get hey, a thing going. No, absolutely. Uh, but the funny part. That was one of the first songs that Steve, you know, and Neil had written together, mm. and I, you know, they they liked that direction, but they well, let's, let's do something new. And, and Neil was a very progressive, incredible guitar player and a, and a muso. I mean, I would really consider Neil call him a real muso. And so there was this like, we need to move on, dude. I mean, we can't keep doing these Sam Cook things, you know. We got to go somewhere else. And when they saw I love me, knowing that you guys were Sam Cook fans, I'm like, he huge, was my favorite of that whole era. Huge, huge. I mean, I loved all that stuff, and you I got, I, I got. I mean, even uh, you know, lights when the lights go down in the city could have been yeah. a Sam Cook. Oh, I wanna be were there. Part, were you a part of lights? No, that was Neil and Steve. So that's what they did together, you know. And they did many, many other things uh, that were really cool. But they just felt like they needed someone else. The glue. I, mm-hmm. I consider myself the glue. Yeah. And then and so I, I show up. Role. I show up in Every San Francisco. In San Francisco, I get four cassette tapes, ninety minute tapes of Neil's ditties. He's got four, almost four, over four hours of stuff that he's recorded, and he wants me to go through it all. You know, <laughs> and he goes, see if we. What we Here you do it. <laughs> and you know what I did? I I I had two JVC machines. I had because they didn't have any yeah. digital. So I had these cool JV. Uh, actually, the Hall and Oates albums. The there's one Hall and Oates album has this JVC. Yeah, we know John Oates. Go on. Cassette machine. <laughs> so I plugged them into each other, and I took my favorite licks of Neil's, and I put them on to another cassette. And what, I said, What was like an example? Mother, father. Wow. On the mother, father. There were there were these classical elements that he would just and he just like had a Walkman and he turned it on and then you know there'd be this lick and then it would stop and so I had a I had to make because all he had was the numbers so you made numbers yeah I spent hours doing this because I didn't want I I wanted to be the glue in this band I knew I had to be you have to read their mail when you're a great band guy you've got to read the other guy's mail and I could read Steve's mail I knew he wanted something I knew what Neil wanted. And I said, we can win, win here. Yeah. I can make you happy, Neil, and I can make you happy, Steve. And that's what I did. I just said, I can do this. And so I edited all of Neil's stuff, and wow. we created this in Stone in Love, like the same I thing. Love that song. Stone in Love. Yeah. You know, oh, man. You know what? My manager talks about Stone in Love. He thinks that that is the <laughs> next like. <laughs> Now it's like a classic rock well, song. We just but got a that's movie. The next a movie wants to put song. it in there. Really? Yeah, we just got a, a license for a movie. That's part of the outro, man. You're, you're dun, 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 dun. Yeah, and and you know what, <laughs> Neil? We came. Steve and I didn't like the chorus that Neil had. We didn't like. We couldn't find anything on it. So we wrote the new, the new chorus. And the funny part was, we came in with the new chorus, and he, what happened to my chorus, man? I go. Don't Is you that love? what Neil sounds like when he talks? Yeah, what happened to my chorus, man? <laughs> I go, well, back in those days he did anyway. But I go, well, dude, this is a great chorus. What, what's wrong with what we did? You yeah. know, well, I had a chorus. I'm like, yeah, and we couldn't find anything to sing over your chorus. Right. So I said, but we, the, our, the outro that you had. What is the verse of Stone in Love? It's G, right? Those, those yeah. I do remember in, in my youth. Right. I do recall Those were the best times Of my life Alright, so Neil, Neil tells right. me at this point That he was on mushrooms When he wrote this song <laughs> I go, Neil, that's a little too much info High on mushrooms He goes, man What you was my mushroom chorus, was it? it was a mushroom song I'm like, dude Okay, well, you know And I, we recorded that song At Fantasy I And, and we finished it And Neil played the solo at the end I go is that's classic? I'm, I, you know, and I'm yeah. sitting there getting goosebumps again, going, "Am I really here? Am I? Is this really happening to me? Am I in the studio with Journey? I haven't played a gig yet, Pat. Really? I haven't played one you, gig with him. He walked in. And I did made escape. the album first. Wow, that's so cool, man. So, and but, you did Open Arms too. Open Arms. Oh, Jesus, right? I, and that was another song that I had brought up Yours. there, my song yeah. that I played for John Wait, you know, and. And it was actually really? a wedding song that I'd written for my wedding. When I got married to my ex-wife, I, I played it. I didn't know what the verse was, but I had all the melody and the chorus. And uh, I was with Steve Perry, and he's like, do you have any ballads? And I said, well, I have this ballad that John Way kicked to the curb. Um, <laughs> it's so he, good. <laughs> he said it was so sentimental, too sentimental. Can't sing that, lad. Uh, and what are the chords to... Uh, open arms? Open arms. Isn't it like... 
That's it. It's very French. It's very European. It's very Euro, huh? Very Euro. I, I, I consider that to be almost uh, I Michelle Legrand. I mean, one of my you know favorite guys were Bert, two favorite composers of mine growing up was Michelle Legrand and Burt Bacharach. Wow. You know, and Dangerous. I wanted I quit music college because I wanted to become Burt Bacharach. And when you and know, my, when you think of Burt Bacharach songs, you probably have a number of them that you love, right? Oh my god. But when you heard raindrops keep falling on my head, kind of nutty how good it is, right? Well, I mean, everything, you know, all those Dan Warwick things that yeah. that he created. I mean, the guy is a genius. Have you guys ever recorded any Dion uh or or what what is the girl? Have you ever Have you ever yeah. played have you ever played other people's songs on oh, and I put them on records? Like well, D- Bad English did when I see you smile. Diane, Diane Warren, Warren Diane nothing. Warren song. Yeah, that's the one. That's a but Diane. not Journey. So Journey's never done anything. Which one else. are we talking about? Diane Warren. When, I see, when I see you smile. When I see you smile. So funny story about Diane. We wrote a song with her, and I'm in the garage. Uh, I had a garage that we used to write songs in, and Diane comes over with John Waite, and we're writing. Uh, uh, the second song, the second single. What, what was it called? Uh, let's see. Uh, next record? Or the, yeah, the next record. What the heck time, was that? Time. No, no. no um, Best of, No, that was the first record. Yeah, no, I can't remember. The, anyway, so I go take a leak and they write the bridge. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what do you mean? The bridge is done? Yeah, no. It, by the time I, I came back, they had, John and her had written the bridge. What's That's the song? A, uh, it's on. Uh, it's on that second Bad English album, and I can't for the life of me think of what time the, stand at the time. No, no, it wasn't no. a Diane song. You know, <clears throat> but anyway, one of the one of the she's yeah, amazing. Yeah. One of the funny things Love about Diane. there's a couple things. I was just talking to John yeah. Oates earlier, yeah. and uh, if you go online and you ask the internet, yeah, what the top thirty Rock and Roll Hall of Fame snubs are. You and Holland Oates are are both in yeah. Journey and and, yeah. and Holland Oates, right? Does that affect you in a negative way? No, not at all. No, you, you know, you got to understand that you know there are people that have motives, you know, and they, and they want to put you down because you're successful. Um, and our fans, you know, prove them wrong. We're not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We never won a Grammy. We never won an American. You never Music won a Grammy. No. Man, that's no, we've sold over eighty million records, and uh, <laughs> by the way, Led Zeppelin never won a Grammy. Right. All right. So there right. you go. So anyway, so much. Well, for you all- know, and I was telling John earlier yeah. that I, I consider Nashville, where you live, like a it's a it's a preservation. Yeah. Like a reservation for right. musicians exactly. who who want to preserve the, the the essence of that thing that we all loved about music. Right. And. You just mentioned Robert or Led Zeppelin. Robert Plant now lives in Nashville. You live in Nashville. Right. right. Uh, John Oates. He spends a lot of time here in Aspen, but he lives in Nashville. Music now City. Too. Yeah, we we moved there because that's where you know the writers are, and and you know when it comes, but it's to, also where like minded people are. You yeah, probably but, feel but, like you're most at home. The put the put downs for Journey went on and on. I mean, we had to endure them all, but in the end, our do you fan- think that ballads have a a that they play a role in that? Maybe because um, we weren't, we didn't write the same song. I mean, and it came from, honest to God, Steve and I loved radio so much, but we loved the old school radio where you could hear, you know, uh, Al Green and The Who on the same channel. Hmm. So we felt like if the Beatles could do, you know, they could sing Hey Jude and do Helter Skelter, what's that? They were always innovative. They were moving around. They went all over the place. To be, and, and nobody rapped them, you know. So we weren't afraid of shifting gears. We shifted a lot. We went from this to that. And whatever we sounded good at, we did. And, and if they can't get it, most people got it because we felt like we were the cool radio station. You put on one of our albums, we didn't write the same song. Like some bands, you put it on, it's just a big drone. It goes on and on. It's like some, Every song's the same, the same key, you know, they do the same. And a lot of these new bands, I mean, I, I remember swear- falling asleep to Journey Records uh, as a kid, like, learn, like my beginning phases of loving music and wanting to be mm-hmm. in music. It was Journey and it was uh, Breakfast in America. The, Super Tramp. Super yeah, Tramp. Super Tramp and Journey. Crime Those of the Century. The two things. Yeah. I wore that record out. I Crime of the Century. Now, there's a, a, a shame that you got 
a, a band that can't you know right. heal their wounds and get back out there. I mean, that, if I had Roger's if I had not, one yeah. wish to see that band perform, I seen them like three times mm -hmm. live, and they were incredible. With Roger, with Roger, the whole thing. Wow. It was amazing. The whole band was one of the most musical, mm -hmm. like Procol Harum was. I mean, if you, you ever know, saw Procol Harum, like, like Jethro Tull. I wrote a bunch of songs with a guy named Pat Leonard, who, who I love Pat, yeah. who uh, co-wrote uh, with Madonna. Right? Uh, what was it? What was the song? Like a prayer. Like a prayer. Yeah. And Pat went and saw a lot of music, and he said the two things that were the greatest things he ever saw live was Led Zeppelin and Jethro Tull. Jethro Tull first. Because Those of, guys are also not in the Rock and the, Roll Hall of Fame. No, right? Because of the music, because of the musicality mm -hmm. that you know. If you, I mean, I saw it when you saw Gary Booker sing in, in Procol Harum and that band was a, a symphony they were like he made that organ sound like a string section I mean he, and his voice he was like I mean you know I wanted to play rock and roll I, I can't I, it was funny growing up you know, I was such a muso. I wanted to play jazz. I wanted to play intellectual music, and I always considered rock and roll music dumb until I heard Procol Harum. Wow! And then really? I heard Whiter Shade of Pale. <laughs> oh, I yeah. went, Wait a minute, that's you Bach. Know whiter, shade I of was pale. like, That's yeah. that's just, Bach. Just, da, 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 da. That's from a few, you know. And I'm like, So yeah. do I love this? Am I, you know, and then I got into Tall, and then I got into Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, and I was yeah, like, It's your job. Well, now I get rock. Right. Because you know, rock went from Chuck Berry to that. You know, right. rock and roll exploded, and you heard pet sounds from Beach Boys, good vibrations. So you go, Amazing. You think you like that? You want to be part of that? Absolutely. Sign right. me up. Brian Wilson, you be a genius. Part of that. That's a great Beatles, same thing. Beatles come out with these, and, and they would always wow us with something new. Sgt. Peppers were like, Really? So <laughs> as a kid growing up, I changed my mind, you know, and I said, Maybe rock and roll is where I need to be, you know. Maybe that's like, I'm not good enough to be a jazz guy. I'm not fabulous enough to be a classical virtuoso but I get this music I understand it I hear every chord I know every note I know what key they're playing in and I want to be part of it you know so I, I you know rock and roll saved me you know uh, you know I've sold stereos for a while and I ended up in, with the babies yeah. it, was a, it was a real rock band that's yeah. a real rock band John Way was a real rock singer that was a real rock and roll band and it felt so and Robbie Patton was right that I went to that audition, you know. So there I yeah, am, back. I love it. Rock and roll never forgets. There's the man, song, you know. That's, that's awesome. You know, to finish up, <laughs> yeah. I just want to ask you these last couple questions yeah, because man. then people can get to know you a little bit more sure. as a, a, a leader or the glue of Journey. Uh, do you have a favorite song of yours, or Journeys, or you know, however that you wish more people heard, like something that. That people, you know, didn't make the radio or whatever, but you think, man, that's the essence of what we do. Mm. Good, good. Um, you know what? <laughs> it's a good question. There, I wrote a song. Uh, let's see, with Arnell, I wrote a song on the last album. It's, it's called "Turn Down the World Tonight," and uh, Arnell just sang it brilliantly. And, I, and it's not like the hit record to me. And I love the lyrics, and uh, it's on the Revelation album, and that's one of them. I'm going to try to do a country cover of it. You know, we I'm, now that I have my own studio, I have a, I have a really brilliant studio in Nashville that we we designed. My oh. wife and I, we spent a lot of money, yeah. a lot of time. Does it's called Addiction Addiction plays, Sound. Right? Yeah, 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 Madison, Madison, right? Madison. Cool. Yeah. So anyway, that's one. That's the song. It's so it's like, called what? Yeah, uh, Turn down the world tonight on the Turn down the world. Turn down the world. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, song. Is there a favorite song you have of someone else that maybe other people haven't heard? Oh, someone else? Yeah. Like wow. something that, that like when you were growing up, made a big difference in your life that you think other people should hear. Like oh for me, it's a Sweet Child in Time uh -huh. by Deep Purple. Really? Wow. Yeah, because it went... <laughs> boom, 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 do, 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 do. Like he was one of my... He was maybe the best singer that I ever heard was wow. Ian Gillen. I just toured with him. Really? Yes. Can he still sing? Yes. Because he made his He's fortune. Fabulous. He made a fortune with, uh, I think he wrote a bunch of songs on, uh, what is the the play about Jesus? Jesus Christ Superstar. Jesus Christ Superstar. So he, he made a bunch, of, like, and then he was like, I don't want to be in a band anymore. And he bailed. All right. And that's the. He's back. He's back. Better than Can ever. Can he do it? Better than ever. Because he would go, ah. No. And then you go, ah! like he would hit notes that no. were no. 
nuts. Dogs would be like, please stop Steve it. Steve Morris. Steve Morris is playing with him now. Guitar player. He's insane. And they, so you, do you have a song like that that you uh, wish people could hear? Oh, my goodness. Is it Sweet um, Child in Time? No, you know, I... You know, I, I kind of had a lot of obscure things that, you know, I grew up listening to, but there isn't anything that I would say, one song that would stick out and go, you know, right, you should check cool. this out. Yeah, no. Do you have a most memorable gig, both uh, good and bad? Yeah, the best gig has to be the Rose Bowl with Bill Graham and 95,000 people. Holy hell. Being the only rock band to ever get to play the Rose Bowl at that point because Bill came to us and said, I need a gig, I need a gig. Uh, we weren't touring that year and he said, well, do a one-off for me. I, I'm, I'm hurting this summer. That's how wow. Bill, he, he walked in. 95,000 people. And I said, and he says, I, I got Anaheim, I got Anaheim Stadium. I said, I just went to see Jeff Beck and they treat people like cattle there. We're not doing that. And I said, uh, he said, where do you want to play? And I looked at him, I'm like, Rose Bowl. He goes, nobody plays the Rose Bowl. And then, Rose Bowl. And Steve goes, Rose Bowl. Neil, get us the Rose Bowl. <laughs> wow, so two weeks man. later, Rose he, Bowl. Drags his, he drags his butt back into our rehearsal place, and he goes, I got the Rose Bowl. Wow, And man. so there we were. We had this fireworks show, like 50 grand worth of fireworks back in the 80s. And it was That's like incredible, mega. But dude. the worst gig yeah. worst was gig. another Rolling Stones. Well, it was a Rolling Stones opening for the Rolling Stones. Hmm. And, and Bill Graham's in the story again. Bill Graham what goes- year? Oh, let's see, 80, oh, Escape was number one, 83. Wow. And we're at, I want to say JFK and uh, the stadium. And, and he goes, I, I got, I'll give you this money for playing with the songs. I got two dates, but we're not on the ticket. We're not on the ticket. And Escape had just gone to number one. We're, we have the number one album in the country. And we're opening for the Rolling Stones. And you know, we know the stories about opening for Rolling Stones. It's, it's, I never it's, did it, so I don't really no, know. No, you don't want to do it. Uh, because the Stones fans are Stones fans. They didn't come and see nothing else. They could give a rat's ass about who right. opens up. So Steve Perry comes out, and we're playing. But nobody, we're not on the ticket. I look on the TV. We're not even advertised. So they don't know who we are. And nobody introduces us. Right. And they start throwing shit at us. Wow. Oh. Like this. And Perry goes... You know, I want to thank all of you for making Escape the number one album in the country. All the stuff starts flying up on the stage. And Holy we, and shit. And we got to run for it. And, you know, I'm like, oh, my God. So I think we played four songs. And, you know, there's, oh. there's tomatoes and beer bottles all over my piano. And I go up to Bill. I go, Bill, really? I said, we got one more gig. That was bad. You're introducing us next time, right? Okay, right. So so the next we did Buffalo, the next city that we did with the Stones, Bill came out and he said, Ladies and gentlemen, journey. And that's all that's all we needed. It's all it took. But he did it on purpose. Really? It was a Bill Grahamism. Oh. Like, huh. you think you guys are hot shit? This really? is the Stones, baby. <laughs> wow. <You're>, oh. <laughs> he, I know he did. I, and, uh, I, and, I, and I love him, but I know he did it on purpose. He put it, and, and it was just kind of a little humbling thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not that, you know. So. so is there an idol that you're afraid to meet or someone that you wish you wouldn't have met? Well, that's a question. You know what I mean? Like, uh, we all have our idols that we think, man, w I wish I could meet. Like, James Taylor. For me, it'd be Terry Don Henley. Bradshaw, Don you know? Henley. Henley. Who? Yeah, Don Henley. Don Henley. Yeah. Have you met him? No. You don't want to meet him? No. Don't meet him. I'm telling you, don't meet him. Why? Why don't you? Um, you can't meet him, man, because he's I've so seen great. Him. I've seen him. But he's him. very angry at you. Well, I've seen him. He's I've mad him. at you. No, but I've seen the way he is, and oh, I yeah. just know he wouldn't have... No, he the would, time of day for me. You know, no, he I mean? won't. He, you know, he's just one of those guys. That'd be the guy. He would say, "You're welcome." <laughs> uh, do you have a couple of desert island albums? Something that you want to throw out that you think are like, man, how could I? I couldn't live without that. Life changing. Uh, like kind of blue is mine. I think it's the greatest album that's ever been recorded, and it was a Miles Davis album. Hmm. Kind of blue. I like Tutu as well. Um, but um, you know, it'd have to be. Let's see. That's a really good one. Asia. Asia. Steely Dan. Steely, Steely Dan. Dan. Crazy. Feel good. Feel good. Asia. I could be I could be an old man. You know my time dancing is true. Does that have I love room. the chords. I, see that's me that's me the jazz ball, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like all this. See, stuff. you should play with Pat Leonard, dude. No, I this album sounds amazing. No, and, and you know what? All our sound guys play this. 
yeah. for uh, for tuning the PA. They put it totally. on, and Beige it still incredible. kills me. I just love the feel. Mm -hmm. It's just soothing. <laughs> It, it just soul, it's soul music. Big yeah. Black Cow. Yeah, Big Black Cow and get out of here. Okay, and, So the last question I would like to ask is, uh, what's next for Journey? Mm. Like, well, uh, is, is there a goal that you haven't met yet? Is there, uh, is there something that you're hoping to do? And plus, what can listeners of the podcast expect to well, see? Well, you know, we're, we're concentrating on, on, on bringing our music around the world. We, we just played Australia. Um, Do they like you there? The, they liked us there. They How many people it. like you? Uh, enough, enough to where we can play. Not many people love us there. No. I wish more people loved well, us. Well, you in have Australia to go over there because they have amazing uh, Sauvignon Blanc wine, right? Okay, but Pat, Cra yeah, sorry. You build it, and they will come. Yeah, and, I suppose. and that's how that works. You've got to go over there and bite the bullet, like we did. We played with Deep Purple. It was an honor to play with those guys. We didn't make any money. We didn't care. We built it, and we think we it was worth going over there because mm. you know you have to show people in faraway places that you're willing to go the distance to come and play, and and you know they were so thrilled that we were there to play, and it, and and the reviews were like incredible. We had great reviews, so we're building something. We're building a mystery. Cool. And I like the Sarah McGraw. I love that. By the way, that's one of my favorite songs. It's an amazing song. Right. <laughs> okay. So so. And any goals that you haven't met yet that you're hoping to meet? Well, uh, I'd like to sell out Madison Square Garden. I think uh, I think we're just inches away. I think away. you could do that, but yeah. you won't make any money because of the union. <laughs> 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 just saying. Man, you're not supposed to throw the reality no, of the saying, whole thing at it. me. Um, you know, we want to. You know, we want to be able to go. You know, to a place like Germany, and you know, and and you know, Germany, like you were saying earlier, you're not big, and and conquer those places. Go back. You know, we play these festivals, little festivals here, uh, to be able to play the world and not have to, you know, rely on the states. I mean, Canada loves us again. We're thrilled yeah, with the great. Canadian. Uh, acceptance. We're all of I a love sudden, Canada, man. out of the blue, it's a, we're back. It's a really lovely place, and it is. And they're lovely Forward people. Thinking. Pergo Her, gets a really lot well. of uh, a lot of vagina in Canada, <laughs> like a lot. And, and you know, when you look at him, you go like, he can't get a lot of vagina anywhere. Yeah, but there no he way, is. No way, that guy. Yeah, he goes well, to Canada, Mr. And, like a magnet for women love. Yeah, he's got that Canadian look. He looks like a French uh, Canadian, you know. He's like a French. He kind of does. Got Montreal, look. you know, a little. He looks a little. He could be a hockey player. Have right you ever there. seen the movie Goon? I haven't seen Google. Oh, we should watch it. Okay. Let's do that. Let's All do right. that together. All right. Jonathan Kane, everybody, from the band Journey. Uh, if you don't know Journey, then you should probably <laughs> stop uh, stop listening to music. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. So that was Jonathan Kane on the PatCast. And if you want to find out more about Jonathan, you go to jonathancain.com. It's C-A-I-N. Or you could go to at, at the Jonathan Kane on Twitter and uh, also journeymusic.com. And if you want to find out more about the PatCast, then go to PatCast Podcast uh, at Instagram and Twitter and patcast.com. Or you can go to iTunes and check it out. Uh, thanks for listening to the PatCast.